Um, I think as most of you know, I spent 35 years of my life running a fourth generation family business, creating jobs, putting people to work, treating people with respect and dignity in a company that's been a union shop for 62 years and never had a matter go to arbitration. So I've been on Beacon Hill for three and a half years as your state treasurer. Many of you helped elect me in 2010. I made some promises during that race, and I think I've kept those promises. So I think where I am coming out of the convention is, first of all, having won the endorsement of the Democratic Party is a distinct honor, and I'm proud of that. I'm also proud of the role that Juliet Kayyem and Joe Avalon played during the earlier phase. They may not have made the ballot, but they added immeasurably to the public debate and discussion. Because fundamentally, there are two things that will determine who the nominee is on the 9th of September. One, the power of ideas to change people's lives, to create jobs and economic opportunity. And I see myself as a progressive job creator, somebody who's done it all my life, and somebody who took that leadership role into the treasurer's office and has done that as well. Second of all, and equally important, I think the reason I was successful in winning the endorsement over the weekend was that we have an army of activists behind us. I looked at the number of Senate districts we won on Saturday, and it's well over 50% of the Senate districts we were able to win. So we have broad support from activists, those people on the ground who are going to make the difference. The person who wins the Democratic nomination will have an army of activists behind them. No Democrat from Michael Dukakis 40 years ago until Deval Patrick 40 years later has won without an army of activists. So the combination of the power of ideas, being a progressive job creator, and being able to build an army of activists is where I think I am coming out of the uh, convention this weekend. Thank you. Moving on to uh, Attorney General Martha Coakley, who finished second in the voting. Uh, that was a voting among party activists who know you very well, who have uh, you know, worked with you on a number of things and, and know you for a long time, some of them. Uh, and they knew that polls show you, at least at this point, looking like their best bet at keeping the corner office. And yet, three quarters of them chose someone else that they wanted to be their, their nominee. Why shouldn't the rest of us look at that as a troubling sign about your candidacy? Absolutely no reason to, to look at it that way if everybody, and I think most folks in the room, understand what the convention is about. The convention is to get activists together, and look, a lot of folks ran for a particular candidate. That was great in the caucuses. Uh, we all uh, got some folks that run for a lot of times, and some were first-time uh, goers, but there were two important reasons for that convention. One was to get Democrats energized about the race and the importance of keeping a Democratic governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, and treasurer in spots uh, that will make sure that we continue to keep Massachusetts moving ahead. And the second was, this is a qualifying convention. Our goal always was to get the 15% to get on the ballot. I think we, and I agree with uh, the, the treasurer, we had a terrific panel of people who ran for governor, put their hat in their ring, worked very, very hard. The convention says you get 15%, you get on the ballot. To me, that's how you win. Uh, that's what that is about. And now the idea, I believe, and we believe this in September, is to work around the state on the ideas that people care about, turning this economy around for everybody and making sure people have a fair shot at a good job, equal opportunity, fairness. That's our message. Um, nothing's going to change for me coming out of the convention. I'm really happy with that, and we're going to continue to work towards September. Very good. Dr. Don Berwick, who finished a close third at the convention. Um, uh, Deval Patrick and Elizabeth Warren, uh, you know, at this stage of their campaigns in 2006, 2012, were able to get clear majorities uh, at the conventions, reaching beyond just the most progressive among them. Uh, you were able to get 22 percent, um, sort of the liberal wing of a liberal subset of the party, uh, some would say. Uh, why would we think that in less than 90 days you'll be and beyond that, you'll be able to appeal to middle-of-the-road voters who the Democrats will need to win in November. Well, I, uh, I was totally thrilled with our result, although not surprised by it. <clears throat> Came uh, in essentially a dead heat with a sitting attorney general 
uh, and remember this is my first entrance into politics, uh, I could feel the momentum approaching this and the momentum is just growing and growing. We have, I believe, the largest volunteer cadre in the state today. Uh, we, have, uh, we have tremendous fundraising success and uh, really throughout the year and, 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 and uh, reaching its pinnacle in the month before the convention. And the receptivity I'm feeling to the progressive agenda, the boldness of the agenda I want to present around a total commitment to single-payer health care, Medicare for all in the Commonwealth, opposing casinos, which are bad for us, uh, really focusing heavily on issues of poverty and injustice, uh, wanting to grow jobs, but the right way. Uh, the receptivity is there. It's not just some progressive fringe that's supporting that. I can feel the momentum in this state. I think we're bringing forward the most, the, the, the boldest agenda in the state, and I think the receptivity is going to be there. This is why you have a campaign, so that now we can take this message to a much larger audience, and I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm really excited about entering this, uh, this next phase. Very good. Thank you. Um, I wanted to, to ask uh, whether the three of you were going to restart uh, efforts to have a people's pledge. And then it turned out that uh, just before I came here, I got a release from uh, the Attorney General's campaign uh, saying that she's challenging the other two uh, to do exactly that. Uh, can I ask uh, the other two, are, are you uh, committed to, uh, to doing that? Can we get sort of a commitment to at least enter negotiations on that? I, I will commit here. I will sign any people's pledge that Martha and Steve agree on. I won't be the spoiler, and I'd, I'd ha be happy to see one come forward. Well, and let me just say, I think it's particularly important that we have transparency in this race, in this primary, that, you know, as Citizens United has opened up this opportunity for big money, undisclosed money, to come into races, we've talked about this, and I repeat that we put forward today the people's pledge that uh, Congressman Markey and Lynch had, had signed, and I think it's really important that everybody in Massachusetts, as we move forward, know who is supporting what candidates and where that money is coming from. So I would uh, repeat that request, and thank you, Don, for agreeing to do it. So I think the word transparency is important, and I have said publicly that if there is a super PAC that is out there raising money, that the contributions should be transparent and fully disclosed. And the Office of Campaign and Political Finance has offered some wise and thoughtful rules, and I think those are smart rules. Um, Martha, I must tell you, in the openness of this forum, I find it laughable that you would issue a press release this afternoon calling on us to join you in some pledge when I was the first one to suggest a People's Pledge, the one Ed Markey and Stephen Lynch signed. It was successful. We offered that first. Many people in the campaign at that time joined us. You wrote something that you could have driven a truck through the exemptions. And then when we came back to you, you were silent for five months. And then all of a sudden, when you realized that you might not win the convention, you offered something different. What I find laughable is that you, who took millions of dollars of undisclosed money in the 2010 race against Scott Brown, you who are the Attorney General of the Commonwealth, sworn to uphold the laws of the Commonwealth, have repeatedly violated campaign finance laws, and even recently, you had to return $24,000 of money to charities and pay legal fees because you repeatedly, not once but more than once, broke campaign finance laws that all of a sudden you're lecturing hey, me and Don Berwick about campaign finance Mr. laws? Mr. if uh, you could allow uh, the Attorney Absolute. General to respond. I don't understand it, Martha, how you can get away with being the person who oversees the Office of Campaign Finance Law, break the campaign for laws, and then wants to lecture us on the first day after the convention that the campaign is in full swing. Let's get back to talking about jobs and the issues that matter in the lives of the people of this Commonwealth. Mr. Treasurer, allow, allow uh, the Attorney General to respond. Well, well, first of all, certainly asking everybody now, since there is a super PAC that has been announced since the time we first talked about it, that was not an issue when we first talked about it, and we didn't think there was a need to do it. There is a super PAC announced uh, for you, and so I thought it was appropriate to come back and say to the three of us now, after the convention, it has nothing to do with the convention, it has to do with the transparency that we should have. And frankly, in 2010, there was no decision, Citizens United. That was a different time. It was a different race. And we now know, as Elizabeth Warren and Scott Brown entered into the People's Pledge, and at the federal level, both uh, Senator Markey uh, and Congressman Lynch entered into it, 
this is just about transparency. And we've come back with the uh, agreement that actually you wanted to sign. I said, let's do that. You don't have to do it. There's no lecture involved. Uh, I'm happy to talk to anybody who has issues around what we did with our own records. There were mistakes. We acknowledged them. As soon as they came to our attention, we were transparent about fixing them. It's all taken care of, and we've done that. I'm happy to discuss that. I do think going forward, the voters of Massachusetts are entitled to know who is paying for the advertising that they're going to see right up into the primary. Do it. If you want to comment, uh, or we can move on to another topic, it's up to you. I, I just, when, when the two of them agree, just let me know. I, 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 we, we, we need to keep uh, big money as far out of politics as we possibly can, and no matter who's governor, better fight like the Dickens to get a Supreme Court that will make Citizens United history. That is not fair for this country. It's the worst piece of public policy that this country's seen in nearly a century. And I was the first Attorney General in the country to say that we should change it, and I worked with other AGs around the country to start the process so that we can change that horrible decision on Citizens United. So I think we progressives understand that Citizens United, if I ask for a show of hands, how many people think Citizens United was a good idea, not one hand in this hall would go up. So I think we're all agreed, and it's something we've all fought for, and we know we may have to pass a constitutional amendment. Uh, I would repeat, I'm totally committed to transparency, and I've said publicly more than once that I am committed to asking that any contributions be disclosed and be disclosed in a timely fashion. Same way that I put the state's checkbook online when I ran for treasurer because I thought it was important to disclose how taxpayers' money is being spent, I think they should be done in a transparent way. But honestly, Martha, I would repeat I, I, just what I said earlier about your charge this afternoon. Let's talk about jobs, the criminal justice system, housing, homelessness, poverty, and the things that matter in terms of quality of life for the people of this Commonwealth. 